Hello students, today's topic is Art of Questioning and Answering. Introduction A question is any sentence that has an interrogative form or function. In classroom settings, teacher questions are defined as instructional cues or stimuli that convey to students the content and elements to be learned and directions for what they are to do. And how to do it. The ability to ask question is a foundation to inquiry learning. Questioning is one of the most important devices of teaching. It plays a very important part in learning, teaching and testing. It is said that the success and efficiency of our teaching depends more on the skill and judgment with which we put questions than on any other single circumstance. It is said that the teacher who never questions never teaches. In fact, the power to question well is one of the fine arts of teaching. According to Raymond, the acquisition of a good style of questioning may be laid down as some of the essential ambitions of a young teacher. Questioning, in fact, is one of the tricks of trade for a teacher. A question is a natural and enjoyable means of intellectual and social growth for the child. It is recognized as one of the most important means of stimulating thinking and learning process in a child's growing stage. The mind of the learner and the teacher can be brought into close touch and the learners can be taught to be creative through this device. Questioning can be said as the key to all creative activity. Now coming to the significance of questioning. The questioning process is an essential part of instruction in that it allows teachers to monitor students' competence and understanding as well as increase through provoking discussion. Through encouraging students to formulate educated responses and express their opinions, teachers are able to assess how familiar or interest they are in the material or content. Now, the art of questioning is the most important weapon in the educational armory of the teacher. Good questions by the very nature are educative and they have a very prominent place in all kinds of learning, writes F. Theodor Struck. Questioning plays an indispensable part in learning, teaching and testing. If used at the right way, at the proper time, Questions lead to new realms of understanding and they serve as a means of organizing knowledge or correlating the results of educative experiences of trying together units of learning and integrating personality. One who questions faultlessly teaches effectively. Salman Holster viewed that a bad questioner is a bad teacher. Questioning is meant to interest, engage, and to challenge the pupils and to check on prior knowledge. It helps to stimulate, recall, and use the existing knowledge and experience in order to create new understanding and meaning. It allows focusing and thinking on key concepts and issues, thus expanding pupils' thinking from the concrete and the factual to the analytical and evaluative. Good learning starts with good questions, said Professor Guy Claxton, University of Bristol. Now, questioning enables teachers to check learners' understanding. It also benefits learners 
as it encourages engagement and focuses their thinking on key concepts and ideas. These questioning needs to inspire gifted and talented learners to embrace cognitive thought at a higher level and is easier to achieve when using open questions. These questions are often arranged according to their level of complexity. This is called taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy is one approach that can be used to help plan and formulate higher order questions. This type of questioning also actively encourages the development of thinking and dialogue skills. According to Bloom taxonomy, we have the following order. Knowledge, describe, identify, who, when, where. Comprehension, translate, predict, why. Application, demonstrate, how, solve, try it in a new context. Analysis, explain, infer, analyze. Synthesis, design, create, compose, and evaluation. Assess, compare, contrast, judge. Now coming to the purpose of questioning in classroom teaching. The following are the purposes of questioning in a classroom teaching. Number one, to test the previous knowledge of the students. Number two, to enable them to recall something. Number three, to enable them to recognize something. Number four, to enable them to think over something. Number five, to elicit something from the students. Number six, to keep children mentally alert. Number seven, to promote initiative and originality. Number eight, to stimulate the curiosity of the students. Number nine, to ascertain whether the students are following the lessons or not. Number 10, to link new knowledge with the old. Number 11, to diagnose the weak points of the students. Number 12, to stimulate interest and effort on the part of the students. Number 13, to revise the work covered earlier. Number 14, to develop appreciation and ideals. Number 15, to create and develop and maintain a good emotional and intellectual atmosphere in the classroom. Now let's see the classifications of questions. Questions may be classified in a number of ways according to the purpose they serve, the stage of the lesson they are put, and according to the particular form or structure. However, a general and broad classification may be as follows. Natural questions. Now here, when the questioner wants to elicit some information and for that purpose makes a query. Formal questions. Here, when the questioner already knows about the information asked for. These are put to pupils mostly in the classroom. Formal questions are further classified into two groups. Testing question and teaching or developing questions. Testing question. As the name says, these questions are for asking specific targets before the lesson is taught or after the lesson is taught. It is sort of evaluative in nature. It can be introductory to test previous knowledge or it can be recapitulatory. Teaching or developing questions. These questions are asked during the course of the lesson and help the teacher to elicit information and impart new knowledge. It helps to formulate new generalizations 
in an inductive way and to focus attention on important points. We have now techniques of questioning. Questioning skills are not just about being aware of the different kinds of questions that are possible to ask. The real skill in questioning is knowing how to use the different kinds of questions. So, how to ask questions effectively is a main key to good questioning. Anyone can ask questions, but to ask them purposefully and effectively requires understanding, insight and experience. Some of the following techniques can be followed. Number one, questions should be stated clearly, definitely and concisely. Give a pause. After pausing the question, before naming the child who shall answer it. This helps to ensure that the whole class will give attention and thought to it. If the name is announced, then the rest of the class will have no inclination to listen. Number two, encourage development of thought. The teacher can do it by paying close attention to the pupil while he is speaking. It has a good psychological effect upon the pupil and it also sets a good example to the rest of the class. In order to stimulate thinking, it is very essential that the teacher gives response to the child. Number three, allow sufficient time for replies. The student, according to the kind of questions asked, should be given time for replies. This will enable the child to give adequate thought to gather the right and appropriate answer. Number four, proper discipline must be maintained. Students should not be allowed to answer without permission. Sometimes, enthusiasm to answer questions results in chaos in the classroom and spoils the whole purpose of questioning. Number five, judicious blending of talking and questioning. Questioning is not a one-way traffic. There is ample scope for the teacher as well as the students to put questions. The teaching learning process is effective only when the teacher and the students establish good understanding. Now we have some of the characteristics of good questioning, which are as follows. Number one, the language of the questions should be simple. Number two, questions should not be ambiguous, lengthy and vague. They should be clear, brief and to the point. They should be suited to the ability of the children to whom the questions are put. Number four, Questions should be relevant to the topic. Number five, questions should be graded. They should neither be too easy nor too difficult. If the problem is too easy, the child will not take any interest in it and if it's too difficult, he will get discouraged. Number six, questions once asked should not be repeated unless the teacher is sure that the class has not followed it. Number seven, the teacher should try to vary the form of his questions. Number eight, two questions should not be asked in one. Number nine, questions should be made interesting as far as possible. Number ten, questions should be framed in such a way that they do not encourage guesswork. Number eleven, Questions should be addressed to the entire class. Number 12, questions should be asked in a pleasing manner. Number 13, adequate time should be given to answer. Number 14, the student should be encouraged to ask questions. Number 15, questions should be put in such a way that every student thinks 
he will be asked to answer whether he is good or weak. Coming to the importance of questioning. Why is questioning important? Questioning is a critical skill for teachers because it is the most common form of interaction between a teacher and pupil. It is an element of virtually every type and model of lesson. It is a key method of providing appropriate challenge for all pupils. One can also say that it is an important influence on the extent of progress made and the most immediate and accessible way for a teacher to assess learning. But it is imperative to include a variety of questions to ensure that each student's learning style is addressed rather than only implementing one technique continuously. The teacher should encourage students to share their opinion freely through the use of divergent questions. This gives students a sense of importance and confidence that will lead to increased participation in the future. Feedback after the response from the students is a very essential part of questioning. Proper feedback will lead to valuable discussion. Developing and executing appropriate questioning technique in a classroom is the most valuable way to guarantee strong student participation and increase the ability to which students learn. We do have some pitfalls of questioning. Some pitfalls of questioning can be discussed as follows. Asking too many closed questions. Asking pupils questions to which they can respond with a simple yes and no answer. Asking too many short answer, recall based questions. Asking bogus guess what I am thinking questions. Starting all questions with the same stem. Dealing ineffectively with incorrect answers or misconceptions. Focusing on small number of pupils and not involving the whole class. Not giving pupils time to reflect or pose their own questions. Asking questions when another strategy might be appropriate. Coming to effective questioning. Effective questioning reinforces and revisits the learning objectives. It includes staging questions to draw pupils towards key understanding or to increase the level of challenge in a lesson as it proceeds. It involves all pupils and engages them in thinking for themselves. It promotes justification and reasoning. It also creates an atmosphere of trust where pupils' opinions and ideas are valued. It shows connections between previous and new learning and thus encouraging pupils to speculate and hypothesize. It also encourages pupils to ask as well as to receive questions and at the same time encouraging them to listen and respond to each other as well as to the teacher. Now coming to the conclusion. In conclusion, we can say that questions are a check by which a teacher is able to know about the thought process of the pupils. He is then able to give them a proper direction. If not framed properly, a teacher can change the views of the pupils. It is a technique for evaluation or an examination. It is for the application of knowledge, promoting understanding and for evaluating a pupil's learning or achievement. A teacher's questioning skills have the potential to increase students' classroom participation and achievement. Thus, it promises improvement on the effectiveness of classroom instruction. 
In the end, we can say that there is no hard and fast rule, but questioning is a technique learned by experience. Intelligent handling of the technique by the teacher will result in successful teaching learning. So, I end the topic with the words from Rudyard Kipling. I kept six honest serving men. They taught me all I know. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. Thank you.